Hi, and welcome to the third episode of Beating BDD, a new podcast about body dysmorphic disorder from the BDD Foundation in the UK. I'm Claire Atherton, and in this episode, I'll be speaking to Hannah Lewis, whose BDD first appeared when she was just eight years old. After years of feeling, as she puts it, like a monster or alien, Hannah's diagnosis at the age of 18 marked a huge light bulb moment. Now 25 and in recovery, she's just embarked on a PhD on how to prevent the disorder from developing in secondary school age children. It's an incredible story, so before I give too much away, I'll hand over to Hannah to tell it in her own words. Enjoy. Welcome to the podcast, Hannah. Thanks for agreeing to share your story. It's lovely to talk to you. Oh, no problem. Thank you for having me. So when we were having our quick chat before the call, you were telling me that you've started what sounds like a really interesting PhD. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So my PhD is focused on co-developing school-based interventions, which address um, body image issues amongst young people. Um, And the point of that is to then hopefully, fingers crossed anyway, we'll see what the evaluation says, but to prevent the onset of body image problems, including things like BDD um, and disordered eating, uh, self-esteem issues and other forms of anxiety as well. Brilliant. And are you going to be doing tests on that with primary school age children or secondary school? How's that going to work? Over the next three years, I'm going to focus on secondary school just because um, the research shows that's when body image problems tend to start to develop. So I'm going to be focused on that. But hopefully, I mean, I'm already thinking about my postdoc, uh, about me going back into primary schools afterwards. But for the next four years, I'm quite limited. So I'm just going to focus on secondary school. Oh, that sounds amazing. And uh, what made you decide to study that? So I guess it's it comes from uh, my own experiences with body dysmorphic disorder. Um, my my BDD could be traced back to starting when I was around eight or nine years old, which is so young, and it just made me think, you know if other people were to experience their first symptoms of body dysmorphia or eating disorders or any other sort of um, mental health difficulty related to the body image at that age, something has to be done. I remember thinking now there must have been things that maybe my teachers and parents and peers could have done to make my experience a little bit better. Mm, Yeah, absolutely. Going back to that time then, um, can you you tell us about how your BDD first appeared and how it manifested itself when it appeared? So I remember it really distinctly, actually. There's a really distinct moment um, that I recall when I was, like I said, around eight or nine years old. And it was the beginning of term. So we all had to have our photographs taken and put on the wall um, as some some form of like achievement thing. So whenever we did something well, we'd write it next to our photograph, whatever. But um, when I was faced with my picture, I remember just being so distraught and heartbroken. I remember thinking, you know, I'm so ugly, I'm so repulsive, I'm disgusting. And feeling those really strong emotions at that young age, it was, you know, I'll never forget it. Um, But yeah, just so repulsed at the image I saw of myself. That does sound traumatic. Was there anything in particular that you were picking out on your image or was it a kind of composite effect, if you see what I mean, that was you were finding so disturbing? Yeah, definitely the latter. Um, Because with BDD, I know some people might uh, really focus on just one of their features, maybe their eyes or their nose or their mouth. But for me, it was the whole thing, really. It was how my face fit together, the proportions of it. Um, Obviously, I despised each of my features individually, but I just thought when I saw the whole picture, there was something just so off and not right about it it made me think that I was an alien or a monster or something like that because how how I saw myself was just so it was like I couldn't be human because I was so disgusting and so abnormal looking. Did you say anything to your mum when you went home from school that day or did you tell your family at all how you were feeling about that? Well I didn't because there was something else going on in my mind at the time I think because these thoughts were so strong about me being sort of not human, uh, an alien or a monster or something like that. I had in my mind that I couldn't have possibly been conceived naturally and I must have been like a scientific experiment gone wrong or a Frankenstein, you know, something like that. Um, And I felt really suspicious of my parents because of that. 
And so our relationship was quite tense for a few years because I had this whole delusion in my mind and yet I didn't I didn't even share it with them because I was well, I was so convinced it was true. Gosh, I can imagine that must have been a really hard thing to sort of live with in your own mind and not able to share it with anybody. Yeah. And what happened when you went to secondary school? Did your BDD continue to develop? And, and if so, what form did it take? It did, yeah. So when I was in secondary school, um, I really started, I started to use makeup, um, but it was always as a form of camouflage for me. It wasn't just like how people might experiment with different things and get a bit creative. It was to hide my blemishes and try and make my eyes look a bit bigger and try and make my nose look a bit smaller and try and just style my hair in a way where you could see less of my less of my forehead and less of my face and I'd wear a scarf a certain way so that you couldn't see my chin and things like that it was it was all about the camouflage for me which was really it was really tricky and I think it was hard as well because I developed a little bit earlier than my peers I was always the tallest I sort of started puberty early um so I'd like teenage sports and you know the the normal things that children go through but I think I was just a bit of an easy target for um the other children and I experienced some appearance-based bullying at the time which was obviously didn't help matters because the BDD seed had already been planted and then it was like the bullying just really created the perfect storm I guess. Yeah it's, I guess it made you feel as if you were you were sort of vindicated in the things that you were feeling inside did it? Yeah it was as though it was as though that was my evidence and I was like right well Obviously, everything that I thought was true. I'm obviously this horrendous, ugly, abnormal creature, um, and being bullied by other children just proves that. Do you think any of your friends had any idea what was going on with you? I mean, did they notice any of your sort of behaviours, your camouflaging, and things like that? I do remember once someone said I looked nice, or they they gave me a compliment, and I remember really getting quite upset about it and reacting in almost an aggressive way back because I was just so you know to me someone giving me a compliment it was like they were taking the taking the mick a little bit and I just couldn't believe that anyone would genuinely want to compliment me on my appearance so I just sort of take that as though it was more bullying (laughs) but these were my friends and they were saying it to be kind and saying it to be nice I think but yeah I always took it as though it was it was more of a jibe. Was it the same with boys? I mean, if boys showed an interest in you, did you sort of assume it was the same thing? I mean, how how did your BTD affect any kind of relationships you might have had with boys at that stage? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I've only had two significant um, relationships. Um, The first one was when I was like 15 to 18. um, And at first, it was a bit of relief, I guess. It was like, oh, maybe, you know, someone is attracted to me and maybe I can't be that awful. But then as time went on, my thinking shifted and I was really suspicious that it was almost like a joke. And I was like, one day, you know, they're going to let the cow out of the bag and be like, ha, got you. This sounds really difficult, though, because it's, you know, in a long term relationship like that, you would hope that in the end, your mind would be able to let you accept that it was true, that someone would love you and want to be with you. But BDD just stops that from happening, I guess. It, it certainly does. I was always just so suspicious and just so convinced that no one could genuinely want to be with me because I was so hideous. <laughs> it was a shame. And did it stop you from doing other things that you might normally have wanted to do? I guess as a teenager, would you say that your BDD kind of held you back in other ways? Mm, I do. I do remember there was a period of time where I remember it was the summer holidays, and my friends would always come round and want me to play out with them. But I was so scared of people seeing me. I'd set really um, distinct parameters, like where I could go. So I'd be like, I can only go to one 